Hey everybody, uh, glad you are joining with us Wednesday night, July 21st, for our midweek meetup Bible study. Just decided to come out here uh, in the outdoors of the church, out in front of the church here, and do our study tonight. Hope you're having a great week. Hope you're enjoying this uh, Florida heat weather. Uh, it doesn't bother me that much, really. I'd rather, I'd rather be at 100 degrees than zero degrees. So, uh, of course, it'd be better if it was be about 70, but the heat doesn't bother me. Uh, don't mind it. Hope you're enjoying your week. Hope you enjoy, will join us this Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. Come on in. We've got things planned, and we had some special worship last week. We've got some special worship this week. Uh, so come on in this Sunday, 10 a.m., or watch us live here or through the week. Some of you watch live on Wednesday nights. You watch live on Sundays. Uh, sometimes you join in at different times when you can. Glad you are able to. So on Wednesday nights, we've been kind of going through uh, 1 John, teaching through 1 John. We are in chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses one through six starts out this way dear friends do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the spirit you must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from god for there are many false prophets in the world verse two this is how we know if they have the spirit of god if a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. Well, we know there were false prophets in the days of the Old Testament. There were false prophets in the days of the New Testament. There have been false prophets throughout church history. And there are false prophets among us today. There are those who don't like it when a pastor or a Christian speaks out against um, false prophets or false teaching or false doctrine. And they'll usually go back to the scripture and pull out the scripture that says, touch not God's anointed. I heard that every time someone would teach something kind of weird in, in one of the churches I was in, and someone would question the teaching, and, and they'd always be hit with that, touch not God's anointed verse people use that they may not even know where it comes from or what the context is they just don't like it when you question their favorite pastor or their favorite teacher or their favorite evangelist their favorite prophet but the bible talks a lot about false teaching and false prophets and it, it's it's obvious in the scriptures god is not pleased when someone speaks falsely about him or when someone tries to twist scripture to make it say something it doesn't really mean or if someone is just saying anything that is meant to deceive God's people or deceive people in a spiritual manner God is not pleased and when God's not pleased you don't want to be on the wrong side of God Deuteronomy 18, verses 20 to 22 says, But any prophet, this is basically God speaking, but any prophet who falsely claims to speak in my name, or who speaks in the name of another God, another God, must die. If you falsely claim to speak in God's name, or if you're speaking in the name of another God, God says you must die. Well, that's, that's pretty heavy. He goes on in verse 21, But you may wonder, how will we know whether or not a prophecy is from the Lord? If the prophet speaks in the Lord's name, but his prediction does not happen or come true, you will know that the Lord did not give that message. 
that prophet has spoken without my authority and need not be feared. In other words, they don't have any authority, y'all. He's not speaking from God's authority. You don't need to worry about that guy. You don't need to be afraid of that guy or his prophecy, whatever he's trying to say, if it doesn't come true. Well, there's a couple things here then with John and Deuteronomy that I want to put together. Uh, John says you can know if someone is a false prophet by what they believe about Jesus. That's John's point. And he specifically says whether or not they believe that Jesus came in a real body. John is dealing with one of the false teachings of his day, one of the strongest false teachings of his day, which is called Gnosticism. Gnosticism rose up in the early days of the church, and it was a teaching that basically said uh, that the body of Jesus Christ wasn't real, it just seemed to be real. Gnosticism taught that anything that happened in the body wasn't really reality, that the only real existence was happening in the spiritual realm, so nothing in the body was really real. And so Jesus, they would teach that Jesus, uh, he was just a spirit who descended upon a body at the baptism, who left the body before crucifixion. Jesus didn't really exist in a body. Jesus was really just spirit. And that takes away the virgin birth, that takes away the crucifixion and the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that was one of the main teachings of John's day. Well, John basically says, if you don't acknowledge the truth about Jesus, if someone's teaching and prophesying, but they don't acknowledge the truth about Jesus, you can know they're a false teacher. You can know that they are a false teacher prophet. And I think that still holds true today. I was just reading uh, this week about um, a concern about a popular pastor who has said things in his sermons that sound like he's leaning toward modalism. Modalism is the teaching that says that God, God doesn't exist as a trinity. God doesn't exist as one being with three persons, but that God exists as one being, but he switches modes when he needs to throughout history. He switches modes from being God the Father to God the Son to God the Spirit, but he's not a trinity. He's just one being. That's modalism. And there's a popular pastor who has said things that sound like that. It's my opinion that a lot of these popular pastors, they, they, they don't use notes when they preach, and they uh, I, I, we all do. If we don't use notes, sometimes we just start to ramble. And I think that this pastor probably was just rambling and said some stuff that sounded like modalism, that he probably needs to go back and do a little bit more study and be a little more clear with his teaching. But that's one thing that's happened uh, recently. Uh, there was another popular evangelist years ago, not that many years ago, he would teach that Jesus became a God when he went from human being to heaven and that we would become little gods like Jesus because we would be like him. It was his little God teaching. He since has recanted and said that uh, he no longer believes that, but he spent years teaching it and people listened to him teach that. Uh, there are non-Christian religions that teach things about Jesus. Uh, some that teach Jesus and uh, John's Gospel it says Jesus uh, was with God and Jesus was God. Well, uh, a non-Christian religion will throw that little word A in there. Jesus was a God but not God. Uh, that's not what we believe about Jesus. There are other non-Christian religions that teach that Jesus didn't really die uh, on the cross. Uh, one, one teaching says that he actually, at the moment they were taking him to the cross, that the spirit of Jesus left that person and went into another person, and an imposter got crucified in Jesus' place. Someone else, another teaching says that Jesus survived, and he went on to live in, in Eastern Asia and actually had a wife and kids, had a family. And you can go to his gravesite there. Look, y'all, we have to know before we follow any 
teacher, inside or outside of the church, we have to know what do they really believe about Jesus Christ. And we need to be aware. We need to listen carefully. Because if anybody is teaching something other than what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ, I believe they're veering into false teaching. They might be a false prophet. We have to teach and listen to teaching that says what the Bible says. The Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing but the Bible about Jesus Christ and about God and about the Holy Spirit. And if there's something out there that's teaching something different than the Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing but the Bible about God or Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit, we need to turn it off, tune it out. It's false teaching. That's what John is trying to say here. And we need to be aware, we need to be careful, because Satan is going to come and try to deceive us with false teaching and with false prophets and some of these teachers are going to be very popular they're going to be very attractive we're going to want to listen to them because wow they're just so wow we just love listening to them but that's that that's not new that's not new that was happening in the days of the new testament as well uh second corinthians 11 13 to 15 says, These people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I am not surprised, Paul says. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. Jesus told us in Matthew 7, 15 to 20, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. And here's what Jesus said. Jesus gives us another way to identify them. He says you can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. And then Jesus wraps it up in verse 20. Yes. Just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions, by the fruit of the Spirit, I think, as well. Read the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. If there's a pastor, preacher, teacher out there, and you don't see love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control if you don't see these things if you don't see the fruit of the spirit i would i just would step back turn it off tune it out you can know them by their fruit matthew 24 24 jesus said this for false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders even, so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. Even God's chosen ones could be deceived if we're not being careful about what we are listening to. So we see this. So uh, we see it tells us that uh, John says you can, you can test it by what they preach about Jesus Christ? Is it biblical? I think you can test it by what uh, they preach about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit. Jesus says you can identify them based on their fruit, uh, the way they act, the way they behave on stage and off stage. Uh, you can know them by their fruit. And another way to identify a false prophet is what we read in Deuteronomy. We read it in Deuteronomy 18. 
And it said that you'll know if someone is a true prophet or not based on if what they are prophesying comes true. And it says here, if it does not come true in Deuteronomy 18, then you can know that that prophecy did not come from God. That's why I would encourage anybody in ministry to just stop before you give what can sound like a prophecy. I mean, you had better be 1,000% sure. If you're going to say something that God told me, man, you, I think sometimes uh, pastors and preachers and teachers and evangelists, they get caught up emotionally um, into a service or just into a situation. They get caught, in, caught up into something just uh, on an emotional level. And the prophecy comes from their mind, not the mind of God. The prophecy comes from their heart, not the heart of God. The prophecy comes from uh, their emotions, not the emotions of God. And they just, they say stuff. And God here says in Deuteronomy 18, well, you can tell if the prophecy is true or not based on... Uh, if the prophet is a real prophet or not based on if the prophecy actually happens or not and if the prophecy doesn't happen that prophecy didn't come from God I do think there are people who innocently get caught up into an emotion um, their own opinions um, and they say things and and there have been those who have the um, the integrity to come out and say you know what I messed up messed up shouldn't have uh, shouldn't have said that prophecy over the last decades you know we've seen people make prophecies and have the integrity to come up and say you know what I, I spoke out of turn I spoke out of my own emotions and my own heart and I I sincerely apologize and then there are those who don't I think there are those who who give uh, false prophecies based out of their own um, they intentionally are doing it for their own personal gain Sometimes it just raises them up um, in ministry because people want to hear from God. And so sometimes people will just advance their ministry and in the end uh, they have personal and financial gain, fame that comes from even being a false prophet. And so Deuteronomy says if it doesn't come true, then you know that person's a false prophet. First um, Timothy tells us more. First Timothy chapter six, verses three through five, gives us a little insight. It says some people, Paul's talking to Timothy. Some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly life. Anyone who teaches something different is arrogant and lacks understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words. These people that say the quibble over the meaning of words. This stirs up arguments ending in jealousy and division and slander and evil suspicions. That's, that's something you can say, okay, something's not right here. All that's happening. And then he says... These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt, and they have turned their backs on the truth. Now watch, 1 Timothy chapter 6. To them it says, a show of godliness, a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. Do you know the Bible tells us that? The Bible, written how long ago, tells us that there will, be, there will be people, are people and will be people, who will put on a show of godliness just to become wealthy. That has happened since then. It's happening right now. Second Peter chapter 2. I told you the Bible says a lot about false prophets. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. But there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. 
They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who brought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction on themselves. Many, this is sad, but it says, many will follow their evil teaching and shameful immorality. And because of these teachers, the way of truth will be slandered. In their greed, it's greed, they will make up clever lies to get a hold of your money, the Bible says. But God condemned them long ago, and their destruction will not be delayed. I, I, it says right there that because of these false teachers, the way of truth will be slandered. Because of false teachers, people who aren't teaching false teachings, who are teaching correct biblical teachings, get put into the same box. False teachers out there saying stuff, false prophets giving false prophecies, and people of the world look and go, see, see how those Christians are, see how those pastors are, see how those teachers are, yeah. See that prophecy that didn't come true? That just shows you that God's not real. Because of these false prophets and false teachers, man, the truth, the way of truth gets harmed and gets slandered. Well, Peter says they're just trying to get a hold of your money. There's a lot more. There's a lot more teaching in, in the Bible about false teaching and false prophets. God knew we'd have a problem with this. God knew we'd have an issue with discernment and that we would need help with discernment. That's why it's one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit. When you get saved and the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you, he is, the Bible said, going to lead us into all truth. He's going to guide us into all truth. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us into truth and guide us away from falsehoods. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit. Well, that's what John says. I'm going to go on in 1 John uh, chapter 4. We're going to go on in verse 4. But you, he says, after he just told them about these false teachers and how you can identify the false teachers. He says, but you belong to God, dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to this world. So they speak from the world's viewpoint and the world listens to them. Catch that again. Listen, because it's happening today. Those people, the false teachers, the ones saying stuff that's not true, those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint, and the world listens to them. But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. Y'all, the Holy Spirit in us... The Holy Spirit of truth that is in us is greater than the Holy Spirit of falsehood and deception that's in the world. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have to tune in to the Holy Spirit. It's like a radio frequency. Remember those radio dials? You, you young, young ones don't know about this, but you had to turn that dial and you get static. And you get right in that sweet spot and whoo, there comes that music coming out. We need to tune in perfectly to the Holy Spirit and tune out all the other voices of the world. I mean, it says those who belong to this world are going to listen to the voices of the world. And those who are of this world are going to be speaking things of this world. And those who belong to the world are going to listen to the voices of this world. But those of us who belong to God, we need to listen to the voices of God. Now, Listen, because this whole passage is about false prophets and false teachers in the church. So I'm not just talking about tuning out all the secular voices and tuning in all those who say they're Christian, because there's some voices in the Christian world that aren't telling you the truth. Some Christians, and I've said innocently or intentionally, are, are de deceiving us, trying to deceive us. So I have to, even, even when I'm listening to Christian voices, even when I'm listening to pastors, even when I'm watching Christian television, even when I'm listening to Christian podcasts, 
I have to tune into the Holy Spirit so that I can hear, even if some of those Christian voices are speaking from the world's viewpoint. And I don't want to hear the world's viewpoint. I don't want to hear it from any direction. I need to belong to God. I need to listen to the voices who are just trying to tell me what God is saying. I'm not talking about isolation from all information. I, I'm not talking about that. Um, but I am saying that I want to encourage us to get as close to God as possible, as close, as, as tuned in as possible to the Holy Spirit. And then to only listen to those who are really just teaching the Bible, sticking to the Bible as closely as possible. What, and, a lot of, and there's another part of the Bible that says that one way we get deceived is we listen to things that tickle our ears. In other words, it's things we want to hear. I listen to a certain pastor because he's saying what I want to hear. If you're listening to a pastor and all you do is amen and cheer all the time, he might not be telling you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. He might be enjoying the cheers of the crowd. And so he's going to just keep saying everything that you cheer about. And you're going to keep cheering about everything he's saying. And it's basically just one big rally. But I don't really think that's teaching the whole word of God. I think when you teach the whole word of God, sometimes people cheer you and sometimes they're not so thrilled with you. So we need to be careful. We're not just looking for things that tickle our ears and things that make us feel good, things that make us cheer. We're wanting to hear the whole truth. Be aware of false teaching and false prophets. It's out there. It's all around us. It's real. It's outside the church. It's inside the church. We got to be careful. But the good news is we have the Holy Spirit of God living in us. And if I just try to stay tuned into him, I believe, and I believe it's happened to me, and I believe it's happened to you, there are times when we may not even understand what we're hear how what we're hearing is wrong biblically, but something inside of us just is unsettled. It's just something that it doesn't feel right. Do you know sometimes the word of God feels right and you still don't like it? You're like, man, I didn't need to hear that today. I didn't want to hear that today. But you know what? It feels right. That's from God. So I'm not talking about whether it makes you feel bad or not. I'm talking about something in your spirit's just telling you, mm, I don't know. Get as close to the Holy Spirit as you can. He can give you that discernment. Get into the Word and just the Word so that when something happens and you can go, wait a minute, I think I just read somewhere what that person's saying doesn't line up with what I just read in the Bible. And you go to that verse and you go, nah, it's that, that person's preaching something that's not really in the Bible. Or maybe they're trying to slip something in between the verses. I don't like when people try to say the Bible says something, but it's in between the lines. or It doesn't really say it, but here's what it means. I just want the Bible to say what it says. And you know what? I was just talking to someone today and I said, you know, I'd, I'm okay. I'm actually okay not understanding the Bible because I think for my brain to, to, to understand the Bible, I'd have to fit things in there. I'd have to kind of make it say what I wanted to say so that then I could fully understand it. I'm okay with not understanding a lot of things in the Bible. Why would I actually think that my brain could understand the mind of God? I, I can't. And so there are going to be things in the Bible that I'm just going to go, I don't really understand that, but you know what? I'm not going to force something in there. I'm not going to twist it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let it be. Because otherwise, I'm getting into that falsehood. And I'm in danger of being a false teacher. You guys, we've got to be careful um, of false teachers and false prophets. That's what John was warning about there in his day. It's all around us today. I just pray the Holy Spirit helps you. I pray you get into the Word. I'm glad that you are going to a church that preaches verse by verse. I don't even expect you to. Uh, don't follow me like I'm some kind of prophet. Just I'm just a Bible teacher. I'm called by God to teach the Bible. I'll get up there and teach the Bible, but read it for yourself. Listen to the Holy Spirit for yourself. And together, together, we can try to uh, have some good discussions together on the Word of God and His teachings. Well, guys, that's, uh, that's our 30-minute Bible study. 
for the night. Look at that. I'm right on 30 minutes. Pretty good time in there, Pastor David. All right. God bless you guys. Uh, we will see you on Sunday one way or another.